Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor. But today's a special day because I'm teaching gouache, specifically this papaya. Ah. I'm really excited to paint this project. It's loose, it's fun. We're gonna do some thin layers and some thick layers and there's no outline because papayas are kind of funky shaped, so. And they're a myth. <laughs> are they? I've never seen one in real life. Okay, so. okay. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna do this project in five steps. So our very first step, we're gonna do just a light sketch to sketch out the shape of our papaya and do the background. Our second step, we are going to paint the meat of the papaya. Mm. That's what I decided to call this orange mm -hmm. part, is the meat. Number three, we are going to paint in the seeds. Number four, we're gonna go back and do another layer of some color on this orange area. And our last step is um, painting that edge of the papaya. You see that, like that dark edge yeah. and putting in some texture lines in the background. So and really green fun. Edge. Yeah. Yeah. Green. And there's a little bit of pink there Yeah. for fun. Funsies. Funsies. Okay. So, um, the colors that I'm using in this project are carmine. and turquoise blue and this has a long name hold on hold on let me make sure i say it in the correct order permanent yellow deep mm. yes and ivory black is there a permanent yellow shallow <laughs> yes Okay. <laughs> and, uh, oh, let me get the correct white. Permanent white. Can't see that. Nope. Because it's on a white paper. But still swatching it. Okay. If you are not familiar with gouache, I did do an intro to gouache videos where I kind of go over the differences between gouache and acrylic gouache and watercolor. You can refer to that if you want a little bit more background information before we start painting. Or you could just like live on the edge and go for it. You know what I mean? Do that one. Yeah. Yeah, do that. <laughs> Why not? Why would you not? Okay. Uh, let's do our oath and then we'll just start painting. So if you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. So, that bell, I just know that. That bell is so great. Okay, so we're gonna start with um, our sketch. So I just have a pencil. Now, um, the great thing about uh, gouache is that it's opaque. So like pencil lines aren't as big of a deal. Oh, nice. Because you just paint over them. So more freedom. More freedom. Okay, so um, you can decide how big you want your papaya on your sheet. I looked at pictures of papaya, they vary a lot in kind of like size and also like how round or long they are. So that just gives us also more freedom on how to sketch this because odds are there's gonna be a papaya that looks like it. So I chose kind of more of a long, like an elongated papaya, but if you wanted to do more round with kind of like a pointy edge, you could do that too. So I'm doing it um, horizontal, no. What is this called? Diagonal. Diagonal. Thank you. You're welcome. Kenan, thank you so much. <laughs> I know words sometimes. <laughs> and I'm just going to start with doing a noble. As you can see, I'm doing it a few times. Okay, there's my oval. And then what I'm going to do after I've made my basic oval shape is I'm going to go in and kind of point up the top a little bit like that and round out the bottom just a little bit. That's it. A water balloon. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> and then I'm just going to um, lightly sketch out something like this because the seeds are in the center. Okay. Here we go. And if you want to like draw seeds, you can. I didn't, but like, just to help you, you can. All right, now we're ready to paint. 
So I'm gonna grab my round six. If you have a larger brush, you're free to use the larger brush. Oh, um, I didn't tell you what brushes we're using. We're using our round six and round two um, Let's Make Art Classic series. You can use your watercolor brushes with gouache. Um, just make sure you rinse them well, but both gouache and a watercolor are water-based, so you can rinse them and it's no problem. If you have a larger brush for the background, you can use that too. It just makes it go by faster. Um, also, the paper we're using is not Canson. We're actually using a different kind of paper in this box. I just wanted to show you a different kind of paper. It's, it's Legion, 140 pound cold press. Um, and, but you can use gouache on very, uh, a variety of surfaces, so you can use it in many different things. I went over this in the intro video, but I'm just excited about it, so I just wanted to show you. It's good information to have. Now we're ready to go, so I'm grabbing my six. I'm going to grab some of my blue, bring it to the middle, and how much water you add to this is up to you. I'm gonna start by watering it down a fair amount. And I'm also going to grab a little bit of this yellow to give it a turquoise color. There we go. And I'm just gonna start painting. Now on this project, if you overlap into your papaya, not a big deal, because we're just gonna paint over it. I'm using the side of my brush to make the strokes um, thicker, which is just gonna fill it in faster. I'm using water to spread it out, similar to how I would do in watercolor. And then I did a rough edge on mine, like I didn't tape anything down, because um, I kind of wanted that loose, rough edge. Um, but the background's completely up to you. If you want to do a clean line, you can grab some tape. If you want to um, have it be like more round or, or change it, totally, totally your choice. Do you think there's rough edge tape? No. Well, there could be. I've never seen it. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. You know? Yeah. But that would be cool. So I just want to point out here that this project, I'm kind of more approaching it, the first steps and layers, how I would watercolor, which is I'm relying a lot on the water to spread out that color that I'm laying down. I'm okay with getting some blooms and washes in here. I'm okay with having different textures and brush strokes. Again, really, I wanted to give you guys a project that wasn't, that didn't need to be perfect and didn't need to be um, like this, like super detailed thing, because I wanted to give you the freedom to play, right? And so like, just kind of play around with the different things. Now, as we do more layers on this papaya, we're gonna start using the gouache more thickly and not relying on the water so much. But right now, I'm using that water. And I'm loving, I, I, like look at, look at these moments and celebrate them instead of thinking like, oh, this isn't perfectly smooth. Like for me, I think it's great that I have like this white spot right here that I left. I love that this is darker right here and there's like a hint of green happening here. I love the blooms happening on this side and this the texture right here from like the the pigment drying. So I don't take a moment and celebrate those things. And I'm just mixing as I go. That obviously was darker than the rest of it. That's okay. You can blend it out. You can just leave it. Still just using my six. The papaya isn't the one that you eat the seeds, right? Because there's one I feel like that looks like just seeds and you eat them. Uh, of fruit, I mean. Uh, um, I could be wrong. Disregard. I'm really starting to stress out. 
I feel like the the cacao plant actually where like cocoa and chocolate come from. Yeah. The seeds of the cacao plant is what is turned into chocolate and things like that after it's fermented. Interesting. But those look weird. Those are like white and milky. The seeds are. Really? Yes. Super interesting. I guess I don't know a lot about papaya. So I can't help you. Maybe, maybe it's the one that you eat the seeds. I feel like it might be kind of sad that I've never had one. I mean, like, I feel like I've had papaya before, but I'm like racking my brain and being like, wait, maybe I have it. I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> wow, I'm really disappointed in myself. Okay. So the biggest thing when you're doing a background, if you decide to do a rough edge and just do like a square like this, is to try and square it up. So um, like try and make sure, it doesn't have to be perfect, but maybe not like super, super crooked. So it's helpful to kind of like hold it out for a second far away. Actually, that seems kind of even. Is that what you're seeing, Keenan? for the most part? Yes, overall. Like maybe thicken yep. this bottom edge a little bit? That's what I was gonna say. Gosh. Okay. I just, I really love it. Okay. So again, we're starting with more watery layers. And um, another term for adding layers is called glazing. So we're, yeah. That's a fun word. Thin layers. Uh -huh. Glazing. Okay. That's step one. Now we're going to move on to step two, which is we're going to start by painting the meat of this papaya. So I'm going to grab my carmine and some yellow and mix that together to make like an orange. I like glazing fried dough. Like for donuts? Yes. <laughs> have you actually made donuts before? I actually have. <laughs> I, I was just about to start talking heavily about donuts and then I was like, no, Sarah, we're here to paint. Papayas. I'm here, I'm thinking of you guys, okay? If it was up to me, I would talk about donuts all day long. <laughs> okay, so I have my kind of yellow. It's like a really gold color, which I think is beautiful. And I'm just going to start laying that in. Still using my six. And actually, what I might, what I'm going to do really quick, just for me, is my paper is starting to warp a little bit because of the amount of water, which is totally normal. I'm gonna just tape down the edges, not for a clean line, but just so I don't have to like, if it warps more, I don't have to like worry about it. Hold on. Because not only can taping be used as a way to get a nice clean edge, but sometimes it just helps eliminate bends in your paper. So I'm pressing it down. I got my paint there. Just try and like get it flat before you tape it. So I'm gonna like, how did that? It's on airplane mode. Okay, there we go. Is that super bothersome that that's crooked? Let me fix that. Seems like it is, since you moved it. I just meant like visually to like see something so strong and crooked on the top there. Might throw, might throw the eye. Okay, there we go. That'll just be easier for me. So here we go, we're gonna go back in. And it's okay if it overlaps on the seeds a little bit. I'm not gonna paint the entire thing because I want to save some of that white. Um, oh, there's Oscar. Oscar is our HVAC unit. He's a compressor. He's a compressor. He just likes to be a part of what we're doing. So he'll pop in from time to time. You'll also see here that my colors are changing as I'm going because some of my mixture has a little bit more red in it or a little bit more yellow or a little bit more water. In this project, that is okay. We want that variation. We want the messiness. We want the brush strokes. We wanna see it all, okay? So 
Like, embrace it. They happen for a reason. They happen and they're fun and I just, being able to just like paint loosely, I know is sometimes really stressful um, for some people, which I, which I understand, but man, it allows you so much freedom because if you go into a painting knowing that you're supposed to be messy and you're supposed to switch up colors and you're supposed to get hard lines and brush marks, it's so much easier to accept them then as they happen. And that's just great practice for, for when you're learning something new because it doesn't have to be perfect or pristine or photorealistic. It can just be fun. Like, that, that's really all it really needs to be. Fun or learning something or trying something new. That's the point of this. Okay, so I got my papaya colors down. Again, I have some blooms here which are really cool. Um, the opacity is a little bit thicker in some areas and so if you don't know what I'm talking about, like on the background right here, it's not as transparent. I can't see that paper very much through it. So that is a thicker opacity because I use more paint than water. And that's why gouache is really fun, is you can play with the amount of opacity, right? This is another area. That's pretty opaque, that's covered. Mm -hmm. That's because I used a lot of paint. Same here and a little bit here. Here's where it's kind of working as watercolor, more transparent, okay? Now we're going to put our seeds in. So I'm going to switch to my round two and I'm going to pick up black and I'm just going to start doing dots. Now be messy with your seeds and by that I mean don't place them perfectly next to each other the same width have them overlap, maybe not fill in the, like circle your painting completely because maybe there's like a glare on some of this. You can also use water to add to it. And if you want it to kind of blend in with like the edge of your papaya because there's like that transition period and I love it when water like touches things and it just kind of bleeds just a little bit and it moves. I think that's really exciting and fun. You can make that happen. So I'm just gonna paint this orange right here and kind of push the black into it just a little bit. And this is our first um, layer. We're just kind of establishing where the seeds are. Um, we'll go back into them Take, a, take another look at them before we kind of finish the painting, so. You can see I'm overlapping my orange. Don't have too much <clears throat> white space in this area. The white could become distracting, but you still want some of it. Some of the white space is communi communicating highlights, glare, uh, moisture, things like that. Okay, we're gonna leave that for a second and move on to another area. I know this feels kind of fast paced. I'm doing that on purpose. I want you guys to work quickly because when you're forced to work quickly, you gotta make decisions quick. You can't hold on to you know, little mistakes or, you know, get caught up in something. You just gotta move, you gotta move, you gotta move. Nice. Okay. But of course, you can always pause if you need to pause. That's true. If this becomes not a fun experience by how fast I'm going, you can utilize the pause button or on settings, you can slow down videos or yes, you can. make them it go faster. Yes, you can. It would make your voice much deeper. Okay, <laughs> do you wanna hear something funny? Yes. Okay, my husband edits these videos sometimes for us and so I hear it in the background and he'll, when he's like watching the final run through, he'll put it fast. <laughs> and my laugh on fast, it's like, <laughs> 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 and I just hear that in the corner. I'm like, oh my, 
So if you listen to it fast and that is my laugh to you, I'm really sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, so that was um, step one, two, and three. Now we're gonna go back in and kind of like do another layer on pretty much everything because we're building it up. I wanna show you that with gouache, you can start with transparent layers and then you can also move to opaque layers and mostly paint. You want to make sure though that if you do both, you start with the watery layers first. I started with my watery layers first, now I'm gonna add thicker paint layers on top of that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into my background again. I'm gonna grab some more blue, some more yellow, make a nice turquoisey color. That's too green. So I'm gonna grab some more blue into that. There we go, that feels better. So I just want you guys to see the difference. This is mostly paint, very little water in this. You can tell by how rough my brush strokes are mm. and also um, how opaque that layer is. So because of how rough my brush strokes are, I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to it and just kind of do another run through. Really celebrating the, the thickness of this paint at this point, okay? And again, if you go over your orange, it's not a big deal because we can just paint right back over it when we go back into our papaya. And then at this point, maybe you can start paying attention to the direction of your brush strokes. So like if I'm following the shape of my papaya, I'm kind of rounding them down here. I'll round them this way maybe. You know, kind of follow that form or that, um, oh, what is that word? Um, it will come to me. Give me a minute. I'll come back to it. Can you describe the word? It's a it's a word for drawing when it's just the shape of it, like the outline of it. Oh. Um, contour. Oh. The contour of the papaya. Now I do want you to notice that I'm leaving some of the areas watery feeling. I'm not covering up everything. Um, but when you, if you do have a watery layer and then you decide to do a, a more opaque layer of gouache on top of it, it is going to completely cover it. Where watercolor, sometimes you still have that transparency. You'll, you'll still see some things in between. Um, gouache can completely cover it. So if there's an area that you really love and you don't want to cover it, leave it. So because of this, technique that we're doing here, we have so much variation. And I, I, just to point it out, variation in color, the greens, the blues, we have variation in opacity, we have really transparent areas and we have really opaque areas. Um, we have variation in um, textures. So whatever you guys are doing, it's not wrong, is basically what I'm trying to say here. Have fun with it. We want this to feel rough. Okay. Now, one more little thing I wanna do with this background before I finish off my papaya is I wanna bring in some lighter values. But because we already did an opaque layer of gouache, if I were to take that blue and add water to it and put it on top, that light value will, will not be seen. You will not be able to see it. So what we have to do in order to make a light value um, visible with gouache after we have applied a thick layer is we have to add white to it. So I'm gonna grab my white I'm gonna mix it in with the color that I already have mixed in the middle of my tray. You can add more or less of whatever color depending on what you're going for here. Now I have this light color and I'm just gonna do the same thing. Just kind of like some brush marks here and there using this light value. And this is showing up and it's gonna stay. And that 
my friends is why gouache is so fun. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Honestly, I was going to wait. I was going to, let's see how light that is later. It's going to stay. And you said it's going to stay. As long as it's mostly paint that you're using and not a lot of water, yeah. it's going to stay. That's amazing. So this is where gouache can be really handy with like um, doing like those highlights at the end. I'm just trying to show you guys that um, you can put highlights back in. You just have to use it with the white paint and um, thick. It doesn't have to be like thick, but like <laughs> just. Like a bowl of oatmeal. Yes, just not so much water. That's how you, you get this white paint to show up. I love it. <laughs> I'm really loving this. Okay, great, we did our background. Now we're gonna do that similar thing except with our papaya and with kind of the, the yellow, red, orange color. So I'm gonna do another layer of it. I'm gonna mix in some more yellow and red. And um, I'm just gonna kind of paint thickly. One note that I want to point out is where the seeds are around it, it actually is going to be a darker color because in the papaya, there's like, uh, it goes in where the seeds go in because the seeds are there, right? So it's not like the seeds are perfectly flat on the surface. There's like a little cubby for the seeds. So in order for us to demonstrate that visually, we need to darken the value around the seeds to kind of sh give a little hint that it goes away from us. This red that I put down, this like orange red color, is the value that I want around my seeds. But me putting it in the middle of my papaya would throw off that um, illusion that I'm trying to create of depth. So I gotta cover that, but that's okay because I have white paint on my side. So I'm gonna grab some white paint and paint over that dark red area to lighten up that value so it does not compete with what I'm about to lay down. Okay, great, now it's gone. And um, I'm gonna rinse my brush to get rid of that white. I like those dry brush stroke techniques. Me too. That looks super cool. Like that texture that's happening right here, especially well, that white on there. I was looking, the first one I noticed was on the papaya just now with the red. Yeah. I love that. Okay, so I'm gonna mix that darker see those. value orange. So it's just gonna have more red than yellow. And then I'm gonna kind of go around my seeds. Now if you paint over your seeds, that's okay because we're not finished with them and we can just do another layer on top. And then I'm just gonna kind of smooth out this edge. Okay, great. Now we can go back to doing our thicker orange color on our papaya. And um, if you want to play with, like sometimes it's really fun just to grab yellow and just do like brush strokes of pure yellow. If you wanna do it with the red a little bit, you can just make sure it doesn't compete too much with that center. But again, this painting is super loose, very fun. So even if you did have some in there, like it's not like we're perfectly rendering the center of this, you know? We're not, we're not focusing so much on form. So um, if you just wanna like go crazy and try like big chunks of red in there, why not? And my white got a little bit mixed up with my blue, so I'm gonna just grab a little bit more white. So those kind of highlights, you can see.
because I'm mixing it with that white paint. Okay. This project is so fun. <laughs> Just, I'm having the best time. Okay, I'm rinsing my brush and I'm gonna do the like papaya edge. The outside of papayas are like dark green, I feel. Mm -hmm. Keenan, will you Google that? I to, totally will. To please make sure that I'm correct. So um, you can see here that I have that little bit of the edge and then just to be fun, I did like a light pink edge also. So um, like, you can throw in those fun extra colors here and there, especially when you're painting um, like loose like this. It's really fun to, um, I don't know, I, I just think it's fun to do that. So first I'm gonna mix a dark green. So I'm gonna grab my blue. I'm gonna grab some yellow. So I have green here. And then I'm just gonna go along the left edge, kind of where it starts to round out. I'm going to do my round two. And just put in the edge a little bit there. That is the correct color. Oh, good. It kind of is going to round on the other side. Now, you can also do areas where you mix a little bit of black in there. Put that in there for variation. Um, I would do a blue edge, but since, like throw in some blue greens in there, but since our background is turquoise, that's, that's not gonna really show up. So I'm gonna stay away from that, even though that's a color I love to do. You can also do some light green so mix in a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow if you want it to have a warmth to it. And again, I'm approaching this at this point more like I would acrylic. I'm, I'm doing um, globs of paint. I'm not utilizing the water as a paint color. I'm mostly at this point use, utilizing the water just to clean my brush. Or maybe you just want to do like thick things of yellow on top of there. Again, it might not fully show up depending on what color your papaya meat is. Okay, and then we're gonna let that dry before I do my pink and I'm gonna go back into my seeds. Now we're on step five, we're on the very last step. So we're kind of just like finishing things up here. So using my round two, I'm gonna pick up black again. And kind of where you see, you can tell where I was picking up mostly paint and where you could tell I was picking up a lot of water with it. See how light that black is compared to that? Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna go back over some of those areas with my black paint. And I'm also going to paint over the edge a little bit where the orange might have crept in and covered up some of the seeds. I don't, I don't know why that's happening. Maybe I'll turn my phone on airplane. I don't know how those devices work. Me neither. Okay. doing my seeds. If you have too much white of something, um, you can cover it up. If you notice that even your whites are making a pattern where they're all very similar, like right here, do you kind of see how all of those whites are kind of similarly shaped and yeah. spaced? Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna mess that up. Because my brain would then focus so much on that area because it's patterns and our brain likes patterns and likes to pick up on patterns. So sometimes you have to purposely mess up some areas. I do love patterns. If you end up 
patterns are gray. <laughs> if you end up covering too much of your white areas, um, you can use your white gouache, your white gouache, and just you know put some white back in there. This is the beauty of gouache, my friends. If you cover something up accidentally, it's not the end of the world. You can just do another layer. Okay. It's in my brush. We have a little gnat. Can you see him on camera? Yep, occasionally. What, what should we name him? Well, the last one was Ned. I'm going to call this one Walter. Walter. It just feels right. It does feel right. Walter, thank you for joining us. Don't get caught in the paint. It will most likely make you stuck. And kill you. And then you couldn't leave, and then you would die. OK. Um, this is kind of where we're finishing up, my friend. So if you want to take a look at the whole thing and adjust things in the background, you can't. You can. I was about to say you can't. You can't do it. <laughs> you can't. Change nothing. Do not touch this. No. <laughs> um, I just want to point out, like, you can tell um, on my painting that this left-hand side, I clearly went more opaque, where my right-hand side, I left a lot of more transparent layers. You can see it's a little bit more watery. That doesn't bother me, that I'm having both of those happen simultaneously. If it's bothering you, you can do another layer to, to, of blue paint here to um, make it a little bit more opaque. I'm gonna leave it. I think actually um, the textures that I'm getting over here are very different from the textures that I'm getting over here, and I kind of love that. So I'm gonna leave it. Nice. But this is your painting, so if you don't feel comfortable with that, you can absolutely do another layer. The very last thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna do like a really light pink edge on this um, papaya, just because it seems like it would be fun. And this project is all about fun. So if you guys can see that right there. Oh, Walter. I was, I was, he was like getting in my mouth. I'm afraid to I'm going to inhale him. Huh. Have you ever done that? Like oh, yeah, inhale? totally. I think I did that last night. <laughs> okay, so to make this light pink color, I'm going to have to mix my carmine with white. And when you're putting paint on your palettes, I suggest just doing little dots at a time. Gouache can be reconstituted, so even if this dries, I can bring it back. But it is a little bit harder to control the opacity once you do that, so I like to work in smaller chunks. Also, I try to use two cups as one is my cleaning water and one is my uh, dirty water, and I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't do it. <sighs> That's okay. Because these are opaque, this doesn't affect actually our light values as much. So it's not a big deal. Okay, so I have my white and I'm gonna grab a little bit of my carmine. And then if you want like a peachy color, you grab a little bit of yellow. If, if you wanna keep it kind of more purpley, you can just stick with the carmine and, and white. Sarah, every time you try to hit Walter, you I, hit your microphone. <laughs> Walter's like, I am here. <laughs> I am a part of this. And if I'm being honest, I haven't seen him for a while. So I don't think, I think it's just in your head He's now. right here. Nope, can't see him on camera. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, so now I have a nice light pink and just kind of along this edge. I'm gonna follow the contour of my papaya and just put a little bit in. I don't know, I feel like it kind of activates the edge a little bit and by that I mean like brings attention to it and it I don't know, like, is it kind of like a funky feel? Yeah, I like it. So, um, I really enjoyed this part, but if you don't like the pink edge, you don't have to. Or you can do another color. You can even switch it up to where the background is maybe more of a peach, peachy color. Oh. And then the edge can be blue. I chose these colors, though, because blue and orange are complementary. And I think, so complementary colors, when they're next to each other, make the other one pop a little bit. And um, 
you can utilize that to your advantage sometimes where I feel like the blue is, accentuates the orange on this and the orange accentuate, accentuates the blue. I agree. So I think it's um, kind of a fun combination. And that's it. That, I'm going to take off the tape so you guys can see it without tape. Also, do you guys want a little tip about tape? Yes. Okay. When you're first starting out, it's not a huge deal. As you paint more and more and start make your own paintings and things like that, the color of your tape will actually affect your painting visually. So, like, I use blue painter's tape, but, like, in art school, like, as I got more advanced, um, the blue would actually inform the colors that I was painting and have an effect on what I was doing and throw off my eye visually. Interesting. So, um, I don't know, just as you guys paint more and more and as you're starting, as you're starting to create your own, that was a timer, um, as you're starting to create your own compositions um, or if you're doing abstract or if maybe you're not following a photo reference exactly, you're doing colors more from your mind, things like that, the color of your tape is going to affect that. Wow because it's so strong. So what tape did you use in art school? So you would just use like like a masking tape that's more like neutral, like gotcha. that cream color or something like yep. that. Well, we don't sell that, so. We don't, not yet anyway. Not yet. Keenan, get on that. Yes, just ma'am. <laughs> okay, this is our papaya. Um, this project is so fun. You can do a series of three, maybe three different fru fruits. You can hang them in your kitchen, like um, really, I wanted you guys to do this project with getting used to how gouache is, um, working it like a watercolor and then transitioning to working it more like an acrylic. You can do both and that is the beautiful thing that I love about it. So I hope with this project you allowed yourself to have fun and be loose and try new things. Um, if you painted this, I want to see it. Everybody's is going to look so different from each other. So share it on Instagram. You can tag us at Let's Go Make Art or hashtag Let's Make Art. We have a Facebook group specifically for just sharing your guys' projects. That's called Let's Make Art Watercolor. So um, you can go in there. You can see what other people are creating. Um, I'm really excited to introduce you guys to this fun medium. It's really forgiving and it's a lot of fun. So thank you guys so much for painting with me. I'll see you next week. Bye.